have TikTok dances stuck in my head. Hey, uh -huh. baby, I got your money, don't you worry. I was really off, but anyways. My name is Kanessa Carey. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. Thank you so much for visiting and for clicking on this video. Today, I'm going to be answering common questions that I get on my TikTok. So if you are new here or if you don't know about my TikTok, I have a TikTok that is centered around eating disorder recovery, anxiety, mental health, all that kind of stuff. My handle is at living with a label, so you can go and follow me there if you would like. We have a great community there. I actually just hit 10K a couple days ago, so that was really exciting. But yeah, if you don't already follow me there, go ahead and give me a follow. I would love to have you a part of the community who we have there. I absolutely adore my TikTok friends, so thank you for clicking on this video and let's get right into it okay so all of these questions and these answers that i'm going to be giving have to do with eating disorder recovery so that's kind of like the main subject that i talk about on my tiktok that's just how the niche kind of happened for me question number one so this person said hello i wanted to ask your advice on what helps for staying recovered be it with outpatient treatment or inpatient or having family involved it really just depends on the person everyone's recovery looks different everyone's motivation to stay in recovery looks different so everyone's situation is different so it really just depends on what is best for you if you're looking to stay in recovery um i think this goes for just anyone who whether you've been inpatient or outpatient or worked with a therapist or dietitian the best way that you can stay in recovery is to have accountability accountability is so important so whether that is a therapist or a dietitian or a nutritionist or something of the sort whether that's going to inpatient or outpatient it really just depends but you have to do what is best for your personal journey to stay in recovery so I think it just really depends on what can give you the best accountability for your situation I hope that answered that question all right question number two how do you cope with weight only going to your midsection instead of distributing all over your body so this is very common in eating disorder recovery especially if you have to gain weight if you were underweight or even if you weren't underweight a lot of times gaining weight is a very fundamental and important part of recovery i can totally relate to you when you are asking this question because i personally because of the eating disorder i had i had lost a lot of weight and so in order to get healthy again and to begin my recovery i needed to gain weight so a lot of times what happens is a lot of the weight goes to your midsection and this is just an important piece of information that i think everyone should know when they're entering recovery but the reason that your body holds weight or seems to be holding weight whether that's real weight or water weight in your midsection is because the weight is going to your stomach to protect you you have such vital organs things that need to be repaired first before you your body can trust you enough to distribute the weight to other areas of your body. I know that it's difficult. I know that it's hard. It is very hard to feel and see the weight going there to your midsection or to your stomach, but it is very common. It's just your body's way of protecting itself and helping you heal. So the more consistent you can be with eating enough, sticking to your meal plan, the more your body will be able to trust you over time. Eventually your body will redistribute to your arms and your legs and you'll carry the weight a lot differently. Question number three, in eating disorder recovery, but I can't sleep, I wake up every night between 2 to 4 a.m. thinking about food. Do I honor my cravings that late at night or wait? It's giving me anxiety. First of all, I just want to say that I understand that it's giving you anxiety and I feel you and it's okay to be anxious about that. This is something that I experienced in recovery as well. I remember for a short period of time during my eating disorder recovery, especially when I was dealing with like extreme hunger and stuff, I would wake up in the middle of the night so hungry. Yes, it's okay to honor your cravings that late at night and it is absolutely okay to always honor your hunger. It doesn't matter what time of day it is. Your body is not a clock. <laughs> it does not work that way. If you are hungry, you are hungry and it is absolutely okay to honor that. But I understand that that can be very triggering and very anxiety provoking to deal with because it's hard to honor that but yes it is absolutely okay to honor your hunger even if you're just dealing with mental hunger like thinking about food a lot in the middle of the night it's absolutely okay to eat something your body is asking for something because it needs something so it's absolutely okay to honor your body and give your body what it needs question number four i really like this one because i think it's something that a lot of people struggle with and i think it's a reason why a lot of people struggling with an eating disorder or really any type of mental illness don't seek help but this person asks, do you have any tips on constantly feeling like you're not sick enough? I'm really struggling with this. I am very passionate about this. So 
let's go i do have some tips but first i just want to make it very clear that there is no such thing as being sick enough that is a lie it is your eating disorder lying to you your mind is always going to give you a new level of sick enough let's say you reach a certain weight you still won't be sick enough let's say you exercise a certain amount and you look a certain way you're still not going to be sick enough your brain is not healthy and therefore the way you see yourself and the way you think is not healthy there is no such thing as sick enough you don't need to weigh a certain amount you don't need to have certain behaviors you don't need to have certain symptoms in order to be allowed to receive treatment or to get help you deserve help and you deserve recovery in this very moment and it doesn't matter what your eating disorder looks like or how you are struggling or how someone might be struggling differently you deserve recovery now just because you haven't checked off certain boxes that your eating disorder says you need to check off in order to be sick enough doesn't mean that your eating disorder isn't serious and it doesn't mean that you don't need help yeah that's yep you deserve recovery now i think my biggest tip that I can give you is to have people who can keep you accountable and have someone that you can talk to about this, whether that's a therapist, a family member, someone you can trust, a dietitian, a nutritionist, a doctor, someone who has gone through an eating disorder as well. You need to find someone who can help you understand that you are worthy of recovery in this moment. Also, I think it's really important when we have this mindset of I'm not sick enough or I don't deserve recovery or I have to be in this place before I can recover. It's important to have someone who can help you sift through those thoughts and make you recognize and realize that they are not true. You are worthy of recovery in this very moment and that's the end of story. You are worthy of recovery no matter what your eating disorder looks like, no matter what symptoms you have. It doesn't matter what your eating disorder is saying or where your eating disorder thinks you need to be in order to be sick enough because it's never going to be enough for your eating disorder. But you deserve recovery right now in this moment. So this question says, did your husband know you before your eating disorder? How is he dealing with it? How did you tell him or your family? I guess it's kind of like three questions, but it's like three in one. Did I know my husband before my eating disorder? No, I did not know my husband before my eating disorder. I developed an eating disorder during high school and I did not meet my husband until my second year of college, I believe. So no, I did not know my husband when I was actively in my eating disorder. I met my husband when I had already begun recovery. I had already gone through the weight gain process, all that kind of stuff. I'm definitely in a better place now than I was when I originally met him. So it's been kind of cool for us to like go through that journey together. I did not know him during my eating disorder, so he doesn't fully know and understand everything that I experienced during that time, but that's okay. I don't think I would have been ready to meet him during my eating disorder anyways. So how is he dealing with it? Um, he is super supportive. Um, he deals with it very well. I think I told him on like our first official date, I struggled with mental health and with an eating disorder. That was something that I was really nervous to do, but it was also something that I know that I needed to do. And and it just kind of paved the way for us to have open communication and honesty in our relationship. I didn't want to be with someone who didn't want to kind of like go on this journey with me. So it was really important for me to express what I was going through and what I was dealing with with him right away. So that I could kind of like get a gauge on if he was willing to support me in that and help me through this process. And he was amazing and he's always been amazing since then. It's definitely something that we have to communicate about every once in a while on how he can best support me. But he he is absolutely so supportive and is my biggest blessing. So he deals with it very well. The key is finding someone who loves you at your worst and at your best. So he definitely does that, which is great. How did I tell him and how did I tell my family? So my family, I lived with my family when I developed an eating disorder. They kind of just knew what was going on. I think they recognized it before I even really knew what was going on. So I didn't really have to tell my family necessarily. I did kind of have to eventually explain like what I was thinking and what I was feeling and what kind of led to it, but they were there when I started experiencing it. So I didn't really necessarily have to tell them. In terms of telling my now husband, when we started dating, I was just completely honest with him. And I was like, hey, this is something that I struggle with. It's something that I'm in recovery from, and this is what I've accomplished so far, but I still have ways to go. And you just have to be completely honest with the people in your life that you are pursuing a relationship with or the people that are your loved ones in your life. Honesty is the best way to go about it. My family was very supportive as well. I was blessed to be able to see receive treatment through the help of my parents and the help of my family. So I would highly recommend talking to your loved ones about it so that you are not alone. But thankfully, I am so blessed with an amazing support system. My family, they're my rock and my husband is 
the biggest blessing that I've ever had in my entire life. So they have all been very supportive and it's really cool now to like look back at where I was and my mom and I talk about this a lot but she just constantly reminds me of like how cool it is to see where I am now versus where I used to be and what I've accomplished when for a while we didn't know if I would be in a place like this so it's really cool to kind of go through that with your family and then realize like how far you've come with their help so yeah I don't really know how to like wrap up this question but we're gonna move on to the next question question number six have you ever struggled with eating when you're not hungry how do you force yourself to eat it is the hardest thing right now girl let me tell you this was something that I had to do for so long because because of my eating disorder and the length of time that I struggled with my eating disorder my body just kind of stop giving me hunger cues and that's something that's very common like if you're not responding to normal hunger cues your body is going to stop giving you those signals so it can focus on other things like keeping you alive so yes i have had to do that and i did have to eat when i wasn't hungry a lot for a very long time so i really understand how hard it is but honestly the best thing that you can do is eat consistently and regularly so that your body can understand and trust you again it's not permanent it's not gonna last forever your body will slowly but surely be able to give you those signals again but i do understand how hard it is to make yourself eat even when you're not hungry just realize that your body probably is hungry you're just not feeling the normal signals of hunger like your stomach growling or feeling like you need food there's lots of other ways that your body can tell you that it is hungry so sometimes it's just learning what those things are so maybe you are thinking about food or you're feeling kind of foggy or kind of out of it or you feel like you lack energy or you're craving something so there are a lot of different ways that you can experience hunger cues without feeling that like normal feeling of hunger like we always talk about but yes it is something that you have to do and i know that it sucks but it's just kind of a part of recovery sometimes but it is very important to eat even when you're not hungry so you can get those signals back this is question number seven this person said hi i'm in recovery but i can't stop thinking about food all day what should i do so this is very common i think it's something that a lot of people struggle with is the constant thinking about food but this is usually identified and described as mental hunger so mental hunger is a very normal form of hunger that people experience especially if your body is not giving you regular hunger cues so this kind of goes with the last question but if you're constantly thinking about food it probably means that you're hungry or you're being restrictive with food in some way the best thing that you can do is give yourself permission to eat all foods and to not restrict certain foods and when you are experiencing thinking about food I would categorize that probably as mental hunger and you have to recognize and realize that it is okay to honor that hunger because mental hunger is real hunger it's just your body's way of telling you're hungry in a different way than feeling your stomach grumbling or feeling hunger pains or whatnot so it is absolutely okay to respond to mental hunger so sometimes that's just what you have to do I know that it's hard I've been there I know that it's difficult but you can do it so that is going to be all the questions that I answered today maybe I'll do a part two of this in the future of just answering random questions that I get very consistently on TikTok but I love answering these kind of questions on there as well I've answered so many over the past few months so you can go head over there and check that out if you'd like to thank you so much for watching this video if you enjoyed or if you want to see other videos that I've made or future videos please like this video and subscribe it really just helps me with the algorithm and just growing this platform as we grow our TikTok platform I love being able to connect with you guys and to just help other people realize that they are not alone and that they can work Recover from their eating disorder despite what society says or what they've been told in the past so I love you guys so much thank you for clicking on this video I'll talk to you next time bye